everyone, welcome to the Pro Polka Podcast. My name is Pro Polka. Joining me is the ever glowing Amma Gamma. Hello, ever glowing Amma Gamma. I, I stop setting me to glow, please. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, but you look great when you're glowing. I don't want you to see me through walls. It's weird. But your complexion deserves to be seen by the world. But I'm scared. That doesn't have anything to do with glowing. Right. Anyways. This is the Pro Poke Bowl Season 5 Week 4 Analysis <laughs> episode, <laughs> where we're going to talk about the three series we saw from last week, and we are going to look at Week 5 projections. Gamma, we're almost at the halfway mark in this season. How are you feeling? I'm feeling scared. How's, how's your fantasy draft looking? I feel like I have lost my whole fantasy draft. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it will be adjusted for those who are curious if you did do the fantasy draft. Again, thank you very much to everyone who did the fantasy draft at the beginning of the season. We will have uh, more time for you guys to look at it next uh, next season. But nonetheless, for those who are worried if the uh, two coaches that have been removed from the – or two coaches that have removed themselves from the Pro Pokeball will affect your scores, I will be adjusting properly to to make everything add up. And, uh, you know, it's just going to take some extra statistics to work on me. No big deal. Let's just get right into it. Because we have um, not a lot of time, but we have a lot to say. A, 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 the, oh, God. I, I'm having that problem again, Gamma. I, I want to scream. Oh, oh. Help. Uh, I, eh. uh, thank you. We just let, let it out. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's repressed as. Eh. Okay. Eh. Okay. Now, this, I don't want to predicate this by saying that we're going to be you know, I, I feel bad when we do that. The only reason is all this is doing is making Emma, Gamma, and I want to play more competitive Pokemon. But we both hate that stuff. So, well, he, I, I hate it more. Speak than for you. yourself. I, I, okay, fine. I'm really not into competitive battling other than commentating and watching it. But I'm just getting more and more excited the more battles I see. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So, first match... We saw the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios go up against the Golden State Greninjas. Game ago. Boy, that was a match. Like I said. There were two games in it. Yeah, there were two games in it. And uh, both of them were pretty... I'm not going to lie. They were kind of one-sided. I feel bad. But uh, In what way? In, in the way that World Leader kind of just... You know, that, that fire, water, grass core... <clears throat> Do I need to say it again? Fire, water, grass, core. You seem to be really obsessed with fire, water, as you should be. But would you like to say it one more time? But say it in, say it in your most dapper. No, 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 no! Don't eat their ears. Don't do that. Say mm. it in your most dapper, gentlemanly, Galarian tone. Mm, yes, I see. Mm, mm, tell about that mm, fire, water, grass, core. If you. If you don't mind me saying, I have my pinky up as high as possible. I can confirm that his pinky is quite mm, up yes. along with like, drinking, it's, actually it's... drinking tea. <laughs> 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 because, you know, only people in Europe drink tea, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to necessarily... I don't want to preface this analysis with one-sidedness per se. I want to focus on... The times that both these coaches had the wins in the bags, if you were just to look at these battles on paper, World Leader brought the better strategy, right? He brought he brought the really comfortable team that he has. He was able to use the Aerodactyl because he had no ban against him. And so, you know, between the Gliscor, it looks great, and he's got the Venusaur, he's got the Venusaur with the Infernape and the Impulse. It's, it's a Firewater Grass Core of sorts. It's not really like a super defensive one, but it doesn't have to be. But the point being that he has a lot of coverage, he had a plan, right? It was the Flygon and the Aerodactyl are going to do as much damage as possible, most likely the Flygon setting up. And on the side of the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios, setting up the Hazards, keeping the Hazards off his own team, and then proceeding to destroy with one of his three offensive threats, and then Snorlax can come in and support later. Did the battle go that way, Gamma? Heck no, it didn't. How did it go? He he kind of got blockaded every section. Who? He was trying to throw stuff at Coma. Right. Can't just say he. Everybody's a he in this tournament. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> listen, it's it's like five or six weeks in, and I still don't know everybody's like relation to their team name. Everyone's everyone's pronouns are he though. Everyone's pronouns are he. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> just okay. say the team name, man. 
I'm kidding. Don't worry about the it. The Dodge Vegas is the Golden Lucario's. Well, hey, well, yes. Yeah, there, there were a lot of... Um, both teams were keeping... They were staying on place for too long. I think is the is the biggest thing that I'm going to take away from this without having to go into enormous amounts of details. Both were trying to force a fair amount of plays that didn't need to happen. Uh, some very notable ones, actually. The likes of, in Game 1, with the Tentacruel staying in on the, on the Venusaur, a bunch of useless turns where Koma ended up just losing a lot more HP than he needed to on his Tentacruel. And then we look at Game number 2 at the same time when the Tapu Fini was starting to set up, and then we didn't see... Golden State Greninjas switch into the Empoleon to just say hello, right? Even if it couldn't wall it, it had the likes. I believe it did have Toxic. I'm I'm not losing it here, right? Yeah, no, it, it didn't did. have it did have Toxic. And once we found out that it was a Rest Tox set, uh, it it made the most sense just to come in because Feeny's not going to touch it with Dual Stab, and you could just tank it up forever. But it it did seem like there was almost a delay on the on the ranks of the plays here with what should be happening quicker, so you don't give your I mean, it's Pokemon, right? We've got RNG in this, so you don't want to start risking all this RNG stuff when you're just losing HP and giving your opponent an opportunity. So, kind of playing it to the book, I, I keep joking about it, but playing to the book does kind of make sense, because otherwise, number generator could just be like, nope, you're dead, and then it goes from there. So, I don't have a soundboard. I have to make my own sound effects on this podcast, <laughs> so that's the best it's going to get. It fits. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, but, I mean, uh, if I if I want to look at a specific series... I think what it's it's tough to say because both of them how do I put this there's just a lot of things on both teams that didn't need to exist and didn't need to happen that Drampa interaction with the Tapu Fini uh L Ludicolo not going for Hydro Pump and it went for Focus Blast and said yes it was a an RNG risk regardless but the fact that Hydro Pump in the rain plus stab versus Focus Blast does the same amount of damage, both a one-shot on the Megalopony, and then proceeding to go for the attack with less accuracy kind of didn't make much sense. And then on top of that, we also have to look at the side of Las Vegas Golden Lucario's bringing the physical Meloetta when we knew that the Gliscor existed, and then not having Ice Punch on the Megalopony to even remotely threaten the thing and relying on something like Tentacruel to try and take it out. Or the Feeny, if it would ever happen, but the Feeny has to get through the Empoleon, which means that the physical Meloetta has to beat the Empoleon, but the Empoleon can burn that. It's It just kind of feels like... but then uh, Oh, sorry. Let me let me continue that story. So then Megalopony comes in and has to handle both of those, but then they can't get through and he has to keep switching. The problem that I have with it is it all sounds good when you say that, hey, you know what? Las Vegas Golden Lucario has had the game in the bag... Maybe scaring me. <laughs> Guys, the faces he's making are terrifying. Because I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> it's 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 like the conditions were there for Coma, right? The conditions mm -hmm. were there for the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios to take yeah. this. And in fact, if something was to answer that Venusaur, because he took Venusaur out in game two, right? So if anything, I think World Leader made it easier for Coma in game number two. By removing that threat, the threat because the Louis Colo's goal was to take out the the Lopini, but the Lopini having fake out and having that priority threat, like I did some damage calculations after, if he just relied on Mega Lopini to do all the damage to those physical walls that physical Meloetta, like Pirouette Meloetta, was supposed to manage, and then you make Meloetta attack on the special side, those three Pokemon that I mentioned before, the Feeny, the Mega Lopini, and the Meloetta, win hands down. Hands down. Yeah. But the problem is we once again see that despite the fact that we see the win condition for the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios, it's not taken, right? And and this has been a more evident theme because I have I, I do believe when I, I do believe myself when I say that more and more we see the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios, we see Coach Coma getting better season by season, but also battle by battle. The only the only caveat that's gonna shut down that argument is the fact that I see win conditions and they're not taken, and that's generally what you would tell and what you would identify with a player learning the game, right? Now, Coma, is that a giant spider that I have to kill? Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Got to speed around that spider. Hold on, let me see it really quickly. Hold on, Gamma, keep talking. Just continue uh, my thought. I, I, I was too busy eating my sandwich. I don't know where his thought went. Oh god, no. He's not dead. The spider didn't kill him. I also didn't have to make a cut because it was just a fluff on my on my TV. Oh, okay. The the issue, oh. 
not an issue. I, I gotta stop saying issue. My concern is Koma can do this, right? Koma can Koma can win these matches, right? But the mm-hmm. the big skill comes down to when to sweep. And with his opponents that he's been playing, I think this is the best it was gonna get for him. If I'm just to be brutally honest, because if if I I want to look at his schedule really quickly to see who's going up against. Because if I recall, he's played against the people who have not either shown as much in the pro pokeball or who are known to be kind of middle tier players. Let me see. He has played. He's played a niche, which had no background knowledge. He played Mitch, so he's got that out of the way, right? He got a week three by, and then he's now played World Leader, right? I, th- I keep thinking they've played more battles than they're doing. His his remaining schedule is Sweetie, Tyler Pokes. He's got I'm Groot, Lunar Cresselias, Todd Skyrim Howard, Manchester Manetric, and then I have to assume somewhere down here it's going to be Traverse City Thunderous because I didn't say the name out. Traverse City Thunderous, and then he's done from there, right? Those are his remaining battles. And four of those look really scary for him. But not in a way that he's imp- that it's going to be impossible for him to win. But he but he needs to kind of pull a world leader and, and find the comfort in his team soon. Because he doesn't have a lot of matches left, right? We only have nine matches in this season now. So I need Koma to see that team. It's a good team, right? He's a great drafter. Like, literally, if we had players and coaches, Koma would be a really good coach. He would draft a very solid team every single time. I I put my faith in Koma doing that. But when it when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of the team building, when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of finding the wins, and it's staring him in the face, right? We saw it against Bitchy. But again, the team composition wasn't like the, the build on the team wasn't there, right? We saw it against World Leader. It's like it's right there, but he didn't catch it. So this could be indicative of a couple of things. Like I said, it, it, it could be just kind of like if he's not practicing outside of the pro Pokemon. I'm not expecting people to put through a training regimen like everybody. Is that beans? Gamma? It's, it's pulled, pulled pork. Ah. Is it tasty? It's actually pretty good. Nice. I'm not asking for Koma to, to practice <laughs> six days a week. Yeah, I could, I could segue really hard. <laughs> But it's it's like if we saw what World Leader's done, World Leader has the has the experience to to make it to 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 know the game well enough and then bring it to just battling week by week, right? He plays a lot of EGC, so he has a lot of Pokemon knowledge. So you see that kind of experience showing, and almost that I don't know if he would have. I mean, he probably knew that Megalopony would pretty much destroy him if he saw Gliscor fall, right? That's it's it's. It's almost inevitable. That's why he had Mach Punch on his Infernape. Like, that's the answer that he has, is the Mach Punch Infernape, or he just hopes to God that Gliscor stays alive and does enough damage to basically Earthquake, and then you go for Mach Punch on the Infernape. But if the Infernape drops, which it would have to that Meloetta if it didn't get the Flare Blitz off, because I believe Meloetta's one base speed higher. It's 109, right? And then Infernape's 108? I feel like that is correct. I'm not always wrong when it comes to my numbers. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I don't know. I can't spell Meloetta. M E L. It's ninety. Really? Wait. Meloetta should be a hundred, shouldn't it? It's ninety speed. Wait, Meloetta is ninety speed. Meloetta is ninety speed. I'm calling BS. It's a I... mythical Pokemon. Yeah, but it's got one twenty eight just... special attack and defense and hundred HP. Oh. Uh... Never mind that. Hell, what is 90 That's speed? Weird. I thought it was much faster than that. I mean, now he's fast, but... Really? Really? Huh. All right, well. I slightly take it back. But I still think the special Meloetta was better. Unless I'm thinking Pirouette Meloetta. No, that should be much faster. Yeah, it's 128, yeah. That shifts all that stuff there. He would have at least taken neutral damage from Luck Punch. But my point is... It was it. It seemed like this would have been that standing. Other than one more, maybe maybe one more series in the future for the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios. It looked like this would have been the time to start making the climb up and Goomba stomping off bottom four or bottom three at this point. But you know, it just it just didn't fall in. It didn't fall into place. And questions will surround what he can do. What what's going to be left for him in this tournament? Because you know, you put Ice Punch on your Snorlax, but that's not the right call in my opinion. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure how I feel about the Snorlax, to be honest. Just in general, with the move set, um, I, 
I am officially taking back my recommendation of Recycle Snorlax, especially with the amount of knockoff Pokemon that are in the Pro Pokeball right now. Or just in the game uh, in general, right? I mean, yeah, that sounds about right. But yeah, I, I, I officially rescind my comment on that. And, you know, I feel bad because, like, I feel like I rag on this week after week. And if we see Koma take victories, this would be the time that we'd say he's figured it out. Because at this point, the history of what's been looking like in this particular tournament, the theme is not necessarily ne just the the team building, but a lot more win conditions, right? Season 4, the win condition wasn't really there for him. So this season, we actually see, hey, he's taken one step further, and he's found win conditions now, right? But he's still not taking them yet, but that shows growth as a player. So it's not all death and decay around the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios. There is that, there is that growth as... As, as a coach, to, to now have, okay, now you've built a good team again, and now you're also showing that there is a win condition, right? It's like, it's like when you know when you play chess? Chess is the biggest example of this. When you're playing chess and there is that one move that you can make that will completely take out your opponent, but you don't recognize it, and then you end up losing because of that, right? It's not a throw. It's just, it's just a difference in experience, and it's a difference of awareness in terms of the full extent of the game, right? So... I think world leader here, let, let's just quickly go over the Golden State Greninjas. I think Golden State Greninjas have shown great proficiency with building this team. I, they've, Like I said, they found their stride. They brought a lot better teams. They read they read the Las Vegas Golden Cards well, very well, handled the threats that they needed to worry about. Yeah, there were a couple of curveballs in there, but I think the curveballs made it easier for world leader. Despite the fact in game two, it got a little scary when he when it went for the focus blast against the Megalopony. And then the Tapu Fini started setting up. He didn't switch into his Empoleon right away. But... Luckily for him, his team isn't that fragile that it couldn't still make it work, and he ended up coming out with the win at the end of the day of the 2-0. So, you know, three points for World Leader just means that he is looking cleaner and cleaner for going into the top six at this point. Yeah. Man, you really... You really I know, I really added a lot to that leader. conversation. Man, World Leader... Uh, I, ha I see World Leader, his name, just imprinted across Gamma's chest. Like he just. I, I literally fan. got a tattoo yesterday just because I, I. It's the fire water grass core, my dude. He he got a picture of a frog because it didn't have Greninja. He just got a picture of a frog <laughs> with a shuriken in its hand. He's got fire water grass across it. Yeah, it's got like a Naruto head headband on and everything. It's just like it's you perfect. You went there. Yeah. You went there. <laughs> Disgusting. Hey, if not if if Ampharos can Naruto run, I can Naruto run. No. <laughs> 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 no, that's not how this works. Series number two, Gamma. We're going to be getting into uh, the Todd Skyrim Howard versus Manchester Manetric series. Mm -hmm. Now, this one was a bit unfortunate, in my opinion. It, 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 it. Yeah. Man, can we just talk about this Necrozma really quickly, Gamma? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let you have the floor. Just, just talk to me about Necrozma not being that bulky. T just, just. Remind listen, me what you listen, told me before this I, podcast. Shut up. Mm -hmm. just rem <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I thought Mellow was 109 speed uh, for some reason. So just just talk to me about Necrozma in general, what it did for Ivan this this series. I was wrong. Bulk Necrozma is, is good. I take it back. This is my official pro pokey apology. <laughs> pro uh, apology? <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it... Oh, excuse me. Put a lot of work in this week. And I am surprised and impressed by it. A lot of work? It was the team. He showed nothing else. Zygarde once, knit a queen for like 30%, and it was just all Prism Boy. It was nothing but Prism Boy. And Stack Attack, it, it, sorry. Stack Attack, I made an appearance. My bad. It had it had nothing to stop it, though. Like, did, was there even a dark move on... on on the other side, I forget. Uh, to the pokey paste. In game one, no. In game two, no. He had zero dark moves. What about ghost moves? Nope. Chandelure had HP Ice and Flamethrower. Because he was running Calm Mind and Trick Room. Yeah, no. It, it was unstoppable. There was nothing to hit it. Yeah. It could just keep getting back up there. 
I, I think the worst feeling for Soda Dude right now is the fact that he had to stare down that Necrozma, and he really regrets not bringing something that could knock it off, like Lorantis. I think Lorantis was, in my opinion, the Pokemon to be that kind of threat, because we saw... Did, did, uh, do you cry when you see the Continental Crush happen twice from the Cobalion, and it doesn't even do 50%, and he just moonlights yeah. on it? Oh my mm -hmm. god, that's so devastating. Because here's here's an example of Ivan, in my opinion, let's just quickly go to Manchester Manetric because there's a lot to talk about this Necrozma in general. I think Ivan actually played this super well. I think he brought exactly what he was supposed to bring. The the Kieran Black didn't even make a single appearance. I don't think Absol makes a single appearance either here. We just saw the four. Did we even see Zygarde 10%? I think we saw it once, right? I think once just I, because... I just watched both battles and I didn't pay attention. I saw Stack Attack once. I saw Nidoqueen like three, four, five times. And then it was all Necrozma, right? Photon Geyser plus Earth Power managed everything. Everything. And that's really smart of him to bring that. So that's very positive when it comes to, again, Ivan showing that proficiency when his defensive core is the best. And even here, if you think about it, it's only two defensive Pokemon because that was Life Orb Nidoqueen, right? So he read the situation correctly, yeah. brought the right Pokemon, and used exactly what he needed to use. Didn't go overboard, right? We're not seeing him try and come up with this ludicrous play that's going to get him these style points, these style wins. He's just like, no, you can't kill Necrozma, right? And my build on Necrozma happens to be everything I need. Didn't even set up rocks in game two, for God's sake. Like, he didn't need any damage. He just knew exactly what was going to happen. The Pokemon that would answer the most because Soto Dude has such a huge ground weakness is wheezing but then you got to cross with photon geyser so it's like you can't even keep wheezing out because it's going to be meant for kieran black mm -hmm. absol and then zygarde 10 percent, which has thousand arrows so it doesn't care about your levitate right it drops levitate yep. because it drops flying so. types of levitate so like it doesn't care about that stuff and then queen destroys it too so you know it's just it, manchester manetric had such a great type advantage a team advantage too and made fantastic work of it so you have to you have to commend Ivan for figuring that all out, and then when you look at the side of to side of Todd Skyrim and Howard, we didn't see a toxic fly out, right? We had toxic spikes on the wheezing, we didn't see a knockoff on anything, and then it just comes down to like, well, there was no shadow ball on a focus sash chandelier, so. We were Gam and I were trying to bounce ideas off here and there, right? Because we do see there's an enormous ground weakness. Enormous. So, the only thing that I could really see, and this would be super far-fetched if it was due to... I didn't go through this much damage calculation. I went through some damage calculations, but I didn't go in-depth enough with this. First of all, we have this Jirachi, right? Jirachi's got U-turn. Will outspeed the Necrozma, and can potentially Iron Head flinch to death until you turn, right? So if you go Jirachi trying to get that to force something else in, because if you look at the rest of his team, Kieran Black can't come into it, Stack Attack is not going to like it, right? It can take it, but it's not going to like it. Zygar 10% is not going to like the damage, it's fine to switch in, but at least you're forcing the Necrozma out. If you keep that Chandelure healthy with the Focus Sash, because rocks weren't a massive issue for him, except in game one, but like, you would have forced the rocks out, and then you bring someone that defogs, and you have the Lorantis. So you have Lorantis with defog, then you have the Jirachi, which can Iron Head flinch most of the Pokemon that might try and come in and do something, and then you threaten with U-turn in the end. So, a lot of damage across the take. Cool. Keep Chandelure safe, and then have Shadow Ball. And then you switch Chandelure in onto the Krozma, goes for Earth Power, and, and Chandelure's like, oh no, you're rocking my foundation! And then, it's like, oh wait, I'm hanging on to a Sash. Bam! Shadow Ball. Yes, it's specially defensive, he built it specially defensive, but all that incremental damage you could get, and not force him to go for Moonlight, then you drop something like Draco Meteor or Continental Crush. The idea is just to get Necrozma low if you're really going to struggle that hard, because the other Pokemon on his team wouldn't have liked it, especially in Game 1. So if that was your game plan coming in, you can't predict necessarily the specially defensive Necrozma, although I think he's been running that nonstop. But, like, if you think that through, and then you see what he answers it with, at least you could make... Manchester Manetric think work because again he's looks so good because nobody's actually threatened his core so we can't actually tell we, we in the game that let me see here let me go back he played is, against uh, Sweetie right defensive. yeah especially defensive right so let's go back to that game with I am Groot that 2-0 in week 2 right the one that the Manchester Manetric lost completely you saw how lost Ivan looked. 
Because, like, I can't beat these Pokemon. They're doing so much damage, and they have coverage against my defensive core of Togekiss, Alomomola, and Necrozma at the time, I believe. Or was it Stack Attacka? He didn't bring Necrozma, I don't think, with that match. Because it wasn't going to do much for my, versus everybody. But he didn't bring it, right? But if he can't figure out the defensive core and you actually threaten his core, he gets really lost. He's a feast or famine type of player. So, scare him with all of these tactics, right? Look at his defensive core. Like, okay, I'm going HP bug out. Like, I'm dead serious. If mm -hmm. it's enough damage and it makes sense, do it. Uh, obviously, if it doesn't make sense, don't do it. But I think the Jirachi with the Chandelure and the other things like that would have been his best bet because you do have to make do with your team. So for Todd Skyrim Howard, they do have an enormous ground weakness and the, the ground resists don't like Photon Geyser. So you are stuck in a corner, but I think that's when you really just have to go, F it, I'm doing this. And we're just going like this, right? Go Scarf Jirachi. Dude, go Bandit Jirachi. I don't care. Just go something <laughs> like that and just really think about if those are the Pokemon that are going to scare me and the capabilities and I use Pokepaste and look at it like that, what is my answer? Because I don't have many answers anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to signal to Gamma to say something. Uh, something. <sighs> no, I don't I don't know what I should be adding to that. You, you said you quit my, my podcast, right? Yeah, I'm okay, just over here listening there. Get out. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Are those... What, what are those chips in the back? Uh, they are... Chicky and Pete's famous crab fried potato chips. I'm sorry. Who? Chicky and it's Pete? A, it's a chain restaurant. Oh. I've never heard of Chicky and Pete. I, like, I have a few American friends, but I've never heard of Chicky and Pete's. Yeah, so, sorry. Sorry, I'm not adding too much. It's just really hot. I'm starting to feel it. That's okay, I'm not cutting that out of the podcast either. Ah, shit. I think I haven't played it well. I think Soda Dude was stuck in a corner. And in the end, we, we just got to look forward to the, to the to, to future weeks. But I, I really do think that the, the storyline of Ivan's defensive core always being his niche and the fact that defensive core seemed to be proving to be winning people pro pokeable points... It's it's going to be interesting when he's pressured by somebody who may have more knowledge before the battles and will build appropriately, or will have the Pokemon to actually threaten his core. Is most similar to what we saw Sweet D in week two. I mean, like like you said, no, this week it was just all the fact that his Necrozma was so bulky. It took it took care of everything. There was no answer to it. Well, so no, no answer moves. brought. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, no answer was brought to the playing field. And it was pretty obvious that that was the case. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't anything to really look at the match and go, "Eh, that's kind of uh oh." No, it's more like a, yeah, you know, it's it's that unfortunate reality of you're kind of stuck with a bunch of Pokemon that are really good at using ground moves. Too. That's the worst part. Is everything yeah. on his team had a ground move or could have a ground move, right? So. And, I mean, it, it makes sense for him to bring five Pokemon with a ground move. So, what are you going to, like, you're just building to what your strength is. And everybody has that in the tournament. Everybody has that one. Like, there's there's been very few situations or coaches we can name that have a team matchup that doesn't look bad. At least once in a tournament. So, for Soda Dude, I think this was the one. Really? I think I think he just had a, a poor match. I, I might have said that before, but I this was one of those, like, it was just unfortunate. That you had such great ground users that could mm -hmm. abuse it and, and you know stuff like again you got to think they're crossing with the photon geyser and then this thousand arrows like our 10 percent you're just like well my whole plan of stopping that weakness is toast literally because these two special pseudos or legendaries in general are just messing me over so yep. you know i i i do not take away anything from ivan for taking that match or taking those matches mm -hmm. but i also do have one one tier one one liquefied tier for Soto Dude, and hopefully, with with his next matchups, he'll be showing a little bit more proficiency. Especially with the trade he made this week, he picked up one of my favorite people, one of my favorite Pokemon. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I actually like mm -hmm. I actually like that Pokemon quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Also, okay. but mainly yeah. because the 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 guy that my ex cheated on with uh cheated cheated with um oh. Oh. showed me this set, and I'm like, oh, <gasps> that's why I'm thinking of his speed, not because of Meloetta speed. I'm thinking that Pokemon is 109 speed. Because I learned everything oh about that Pokemon. Oh, my God. That's what it is. Brain yeah, if you guys, if you guys watch the old uh, uh, showdown videos that Noob used to do, you you would know. You would know about this Pokemon. Very much so. 
Answer in the comments section below. What Pokemon am I talking about before? Well, if you're a coach, you're going to know, but... Do you remember the speed number I said? You remember the Pokemon that I learned from my cheaty ex-friend? I feel kind of... Does that make me a diva now? That I'm just, like, talking mad crap about people? And be like, I don't care what you say. I mean, maybe I'm just a normal person. I'm not caring, but, like... Does that make I me, mean, a, does that make me a, 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 like, a superstar where I just feel untouchable all of a sudden? I don't, I mean, but... I mean, I mean, if they're being a scumbag, you know, it's, it's okay to talk shit. I mean, heck, I, I mean... Po you said the word again! <clears throat> Sorry! I don't want to have to edit that much, dude. Come on. Do you actually edit it out? I thought I heard it last time. Oh, I leave, like, one or two in if it happens. Okay. I just try... We just try our best not to say it. Yes. We are playing Pokemon, and the, and the average age of Pokemon is, like, 22. We don't want those guys learning. Those those guys, yeah. gals, and everybody here uh, yeah. learning those bad words, like mittens. They, if they learn the heck word, then we're done for. If you get the mittens joke, by the way, you are a Simpsons fan. Apparently, nobody in the Team Pocket Aces knows the Mittens joke. I have joke. no idea. Like, I still like, don't understand. Ralph Wiggum, he said it. Uh, I, I they were in clip. school. They were, it was for the... Um, I forget what they were doing. They were like, say a swear. If you're happy you know it, say a swear. I can't remember if that was when they were making the Furbies that took over Springfield, or if it was... Um, I can feel like it was the marketing episode where it was the Furbies, whatever their version of the Furbies were. Or is when they had like I can't remember was it the was it the, when the Christians took over or not the Christians the nuns like they started moving towards like nun schools or stuff like that I can't remember I I don't know but I'm pretty sure Nelson says boobs and then Milhouse says Heine and then Ralph Wickham says mittens and then everybody laughs so that's why I think it's the I think it's the marketing one where they're collecting data on the kids to see what toys they like best oh uh bad <laughs> we've got Detective I'm Gamma this on up. the case. While he's looking that up, let's talk about the third series of <laughs> week four, which was Tyler Poke Trainer versus uh, Shark King. It was the Lunar Cresselias versus Traverse City Thunderous. Gamma? Yeah. He did it. I just used he. he Tyler did it. did it. He did it. He took down Traverse City Thunderous in game one. You know how he did it? That, that milk tank. He strapped a cute little ascot around his cow and said, get him, and won. He? That is the definition of cheesing a series of two for points. That's the definition. And it worked. That's the worst part is it worked. Now, there's nothing wrong with that per se. The thing is, the thing you have to look at is actually, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm going to twist this around and say, actually, I think Traverse City Thunderous did not bring their A game in game one. Oh snap! Oh snap! What's wrong? You think I can't call him I, out? You think I can't call, call a top him four? Out. You can't think I, I'm calling call him out? Um, what do you Shark mean? King, you're getting called out. Yeah, I am calling him out. I think the hunter's <laughs> useless. I think the hunter was absolutely useless here. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I now, still don't understand the hunter. Okay, so the, the hunter is not. It's not the problem per se. When I look at Luter Cresselius and I look at the team that they have. It makes sense for killing the Shaman because it has Levitate and Shaman can't hit it with Earth Power, right? It makes sense for killing the Sylveon. It makes sense for uh, those two Pokemon. And if I look at Sylveon or I guess maybe Shaman if he was really worried about the Shaman. No, I don't get the Shaman. He didn't bring Rhyperior. He brought Aggron, but he was going to make a... Yeah, I really don't get it. I really don't actually... <laughs> Now that I do a second take, because I was like, I get the Haunter, and now I look back and I go, I don't get the Haunter. I'm sure there's a reason that I'm just missing, because, you know, time crunch, and I'm not thinking about it all the way. But you can't fault him for not expecting an Assault Vest Incinerator. You could expect it, but I really think when he tried to set it up in Game 1 with the Substitute... Life Orb Substitute, by the way, not the worst. It's a very older-gen ideology where you just kind of get your groove on with it and stay safe and try and get as many value hits off as possible. But... I, I really think it was meant to be kind of that pseudo-safe, can threaten stuff like Mega Pidgeot once it gets behind the sub, because it also can't be threatened and will get the damage down. But once you saw that Incineroar could manage it, it kind of just fell flat on its face, and you have to question, like, was it ever going to be worth it? Because he must have thought that Lunar Cresselius was going to bring something different to make that Haunter work. Maybe. We can't, we can't tell what he's thinking. We don't know. That's fair. But then what would be the team that he would have expected Tyler Polk to bring? To the pokey paste. Like, unless he's literally just expecting the shame in Sylveon? Because then it wouldn't make sense to bring Sylveon because he's worried about the Aggron, right? So, what, what, 
I, I, that's that, that's the really thing that I look at. The only other thing I could really see is let me let me take an official look at this Haunter's move set. Had pain split, so sub life orb pain split can bring Pokemon down so that he can get the kill on them and kind of keep it healthy. But I don't, I I don't have a lot of huge faith in that. So I'm kind of. I don't know if this was meant to be a flex, but I, but again, I'm sticking true to what I said. I think Sharking of the Traverse City Thunders could have just brought it a better plan in game one. I, I, if it was a Scarf Taunter, I'd get it. Because then you keep dropping Mad Bombs and stuff like Mega Pidgeot, and you could drop it on a lot more Pokemon that might scare you. Because you know you have to deal with that big fast bird. Unless the substitute is meant to fight the Pidgeot, and then he has to like stay in, and then he gets blasted type of thing. But I'm not sure if that was going to be... The way in, because when you saw it in game two, when you saw Shark King's team in game two, especially, especially after seeing Scarf Mill Tank, uh, the composition looks a lot stronger, right? You shift from, let me see here, let me, let me grab the official shifts here. You switch from the Serena and the Haunter over to Alola, Ninetales, and the Starmie. Suddenly, mm -hmm. Shark King looks near unstoppable because he has a team that's just gonna get his pokemon in and it ends up being the kabutops that sweeps through and it kind of makes sense with the pokemon that were left over after no it, it just looking at the matches i'm seeing the end of them and i see oh you know lunar Cresselius has three pokemon left they took out shirking got it then i look at the second match and i just see shirking has literally nothing on and i'm just like you know what that that kind of that's a good way to encapsulate this match. It was a solid team and a solid swapped out. If we were to compare the way that Lunar Cresselius looked in Game 1 versus Game 2, Game 2, he actually looked kind of lost. Really, like Tyler Polk looked a little lost. And I don't think that's necessarily the result of him being a non-experienced player, but it definitely looks like once the switch has happened, it's almost like an oh moment for him where he goes, wait a minute. Why didn't I expect him to switch considering that I beat him game one with a really cheesy set like Mart Miltank? Do I have a backup? Oh, no, I don't, right? And we did see glimpses of Kabutas being scary against this team when we... when we It's it's always been weak armor. But then once you see the little Ninetales, you got to think like, wait a minute, little Ninetales is genius with this build because weak armor will yeah. make him drop his defense, but then he suddenly gets a speed boost and an, and an attack. Oh, no, he gets a... Where did he get the attack boost from? Uh, Let's find out. Am I missing something? How did he get the attack boost? I uh, don't know. He got the attack booster sword. No, that's sword stance. Uh, Where did he get it from? I feel I feel silly right now. <gasps> oh, did, no, see. he doesn't have weakness policy. What? What am I? I'm lost. Weak armor plus speed. Yeah, he did sword stance. He did sword stance. Oh my god, why is it just not showing in the thing? That was weird. Okay, yeah, no, he sword stance. You're right. So how did he lose the attack, though? Uh, oh, it's Cinnabar's intimidate. intimidate! Oh my god. Yeah. Thank you. I got there. Yeah. I got there. Yeah. Yes. But, okay, so the point being, though, that we once you see Sharking have that momentum, that's what it's supposed to look like for his team. You get a 6-0 because your team's barely touched. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's again, this was the strategy. This is how you see one player's pick up free points because you just get to build something ludicrous and get that point. But you need to have a backup strat. I think I think looking at someone who was really cheesy like Ivan lost a lot of points. You wouldn't get two O's, you get one ones because he'd have this wonderful strategy and be like, "Yay, I got it against you." And then game two comes around, and you go, "Oh, you saw that coming." Gee, it's like people learn. So you know, <laughs> it's a bit unfortunate, but at the same time, I think Traverse City Thunder has adapted to that extremely well. Although one could argue that it shouldn't have had to be an adaptation, in my opinion. I think Shark King. Like, you're not going to expect Scarf Mill Tank, and that's not really the point. I think my point is, I'm kind of looking at it going, I don't get the Haunter. I don't think the Serena was the worst call either. I think Serena's a very safe call, but I don't get the Haunter in terms of what it was actually going to accomplish. And of course, that's without the knowledge, and I'd have to look deeper into it. But I look at, when I look at Ludacrisalia's team, and I see sub pain split, I'm like, okay, so he's, he's probably planning to weaken some big walls he can't take out, but you have other options but again it's like what do i know i wasn't in the situation like if starby had come to begin with maybe but then he's probably still worried about mm -hmm. the shaman that's why he, that, that, that's what i'm thinking like he would have brought this team only but then you can have a little nine tails from the beginning and that's where i'm also yeah. pseudo lost so you know it hindsight's 2020 i think mm -hmm. 
I think what Tyler did for himself grabbing that extra point is just super funny and did it. Uh, and Shark King definitely exploited, hey, when I switch, Tyler Poke Trainer doesn't look too confident. All of a sudden, his entire plan falls apart. So abusing that and benefiting from it not falling too far behind in the standings. Any final words on that, Gamma? I'm going to put a scarf on all my milk tanks from now on. Why not? I mean, you know what? Space Hunter Speed is not that bad. If it had better coverage, it wouldn't be that bad of a Pokemon. Like, it's it's not actually that bad of a Pokemon as a Stealth Rocker. Base 100 Speed Stealth Rocker. Oh, no, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, plus, it brings a lot of utility to the team. That's why you get caught off by Scarf. I think it was Scarf no. Rocks, too, right? Uh, That's a good question. Mm, no, it wasn't. Oh, my I... God. It actually, I cover only... I didn't, I didn't take a deep enough look at this. Where's Can we just... Tank? Let's just read this meal tank off real quick. Jolly Nature, Rock Slide, Body Slam, Earthquake, Iron Head. Dang. Wow. This was a this was a beefy beefy milk tank. He built the milk tank for Alola and Nine Tails. That's beautiful. Amazing. That's actually You know what? Ah, oh, I wish I don't think he would have found a way that Oh! Oh! I get it, Gamma! What? That's why he let Milk Tank game too, because he saw Alola and Nine Tails would destroy him! That's what it was! Oh! Okay. Ah, oh, man. That makes so much more sense. And he wasn't going to go for Earthquake against Agron because Agron wouldn't take any damage from it. Okay. Now I feel stupid. Yeah, now I do kind of feel a little stupid because <laughs> now that I look at the full moveset, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, we saw the Healing Wish on the Shaman too. It, it makes a lot more mm -hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. it's such a shame we couldn't see more of it. You I didn't trash. I didn't, tr a... I didn't trash talk Tyler too much, did I? I hope not. You could say it's a uh... <laughs> shaman. I make that joke all the time. That doesn't count. Oh, okay. But seriously, I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't want to say. I, I'm sorry, Tyler. You actually had genius this in this plan. Yeah, I take back all the horrible I, things Noob said. You brought Scarf Excadrill again, but you brought Rapid Spin. So bless you, my friend. <laughs> actually, you know what? You know what? What? If he had switched out Miltank for the Excadrill, I think he would have gotten an equal cheesy kill on the uh, little Nine Tails. Really? It's kind of a shame. Well, it's Scarf outspeeds and he has Iron Head. Oh, he, he does. Because yeah. here's the thing, right? Maybe because you know it's Tyler Poke Trainer, he would bring that for his team, the Lunar Cresselias. But mm -hmm. I, I think he still have to work it in. I, I think that would work more if he was getting a really good U-turn core going between like his Gligar and his. Incineroar, like that's that's and, and his Mega Pidgeot, like he does have a decent alleyway for U turning. The only problem is two of them are like super weak to ice, and or well, they just really don't like ice, and they cover each other. It might become a little predictable, but man, that's actually and he brought. Oh my god, he brought Aurora Veil on his Cryogonal. The, okay, <laughs> this man's a genius. I take back all the horrible things this you said the last genius. ten minutes. He brought Flash Cannon to fight it too. So he actually pulled the world leader and was going to bring everything for that little Ninetales. Why didn't he bring it then? Oh, that's such a shame. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't bring it. Per I, like, Cryogonal wouldn't like Kabutops anyways, even though it would outspeed if he brought max speed, which he didn't. So Kabutops is going to outspeed that. Agron kind of beats all these Pokemon down. So it's really tough to legitimize that, especially since they can't do much to it anyways. So... Remember when we talked about the beginning of the season where Lunar Cresselius kind of looked like it was a team that was just a mix mash of stuff? Mm -hmm. I think that's where it's showing now. Where he does have a lot of great potential. And those builds are very smart. Like, I, we do look over the Poke Pastes, but we more or less look for, like, really big outliers. And I guess we just really dropped the mark on this one because looking yeah. at what we saw in front of us, which is like, whoa, Scarf Miltank keeps staring at the cow. And then we don't actually look at how... How much actually actual variety he brought in this even assault vest tyrantrum? Interesting. Yeah, we we definitely goofed with this pokey pace. But nonetheless, I don't think it changed the fact that Sharking would have navigated his way around the team because the, these these varieties would have still died to the same Pokemon, and that Excadrill, if he didn't have the double speed set up on the Kabutops, would have then surprised and be like, surprise, earthquake, I'm scarfed again. And, but by then the Aurora Veil was also up in game two, so. There were a lot of options for Tyler, but I think, eh, other than switching out that mill tank, he had the I had the extra going game, game too. Why did I say switch the ex, uh, the mill tank out for Excadrill? It's already there. But if he switches out the mill tank for maybe something else like the crack, that'd be really funny if he got the Aurora Veil up. That would have been extremely hype in chat. Oh yeah. But if he had no, if he had another plan that he could have brought better, I I still think 
Traverse City Thunders had enough knowledge to work their way around. It would have really been down to that Excadrill getting the drop on him. So, I don't think he saw it do anything in game. So, either way. Good, good, good attempt, I guess. Uh, let, let me, let me take back my, uh, let me take back my TLDR. Uh, RTDDT. Yeah, got him. Uh, I think Shark King still had it. <laughs> I still, I still think Shark King in game one didn't bring the strongest comp, but figured out in game two. Ta-da! Yep. Let's keep this train rolling. Chug -a -chug -a -chug -a -chug -a chug -a chug -a chug Show me your move set. Oh my goodness. Chur -chur -chur. I don't know why I'm doing the Snoop Dogg thing. Driving yes. driving the truck. I don't even know what this is supposed God. to mean. I just see uh, this as a bus driver. Something is not family friendly. Really? Maybe. I just... It's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Man, I've got a Pokemon for you today, Gamma. Oh boy, I can't wait to filter this one out. Cap. <sighs> Gamma, will we actually make it through today getting everything correct? I will actually not even look at Showdown. <laughs> You're gonna that's, go that's... super hard mode? I'm gonna go fair mode because of last week. You know, Gamma, you I still have bad. every you have every right just use Showdown correctly. Just okay, use it to look up I, the tier. What am I allowed to do? You're okay. allowed to look like look up the tier and then if I give mm -hmm. you the ability you could look up the ability. But I think leaving out the okay. ability is making sense. Especially with this Pokemon, I need to leave out the ability quite hard. Okay. That's I'm going fine. deep into the I'm going deep back into the metagame. Deep back. Oh boy. Alright. So to remind the audience, it's fifteen to thirteen right now in favor of Amagamma. Mm -hmm. His uh his shenaniganing ways has gotten him into great success here. But Yes. There is there is the potential. For me to come back, if I could trip him up this week, because every point matters. Gamma, who goes first? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can go first. Okay. So my Pokemon <laughs> comes from Gen 3 OU, but it's Gen 7 PU. Uh, I should make you have to screen uh, share to show me. Oh, you said it's Gen 7 PU? It's Gen 7 PU. How do I do that again? Is it the OU Just and... Just in Pokemon, type in PU. Yeah. And then filter PU. Okay. Don't filter everything. Filter just P. PU. PU. Yes. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. All you see is a list of PU pokes, right? Yeah, I'll well, write you. Yes. There you go. <laughs> it's my favorite Gen 3 Pokemon. I was going to say, did you just guess that? <laughs> no, okay. it's the first thing that popped up. The Gen 3 OU set of this Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Endure, Flail, Agility, Hidden Power, Ghost. Oh my god. <laughs> I. Uh. Um. Frick, I accidentally clicked on something. Ah. Oh no, he has to type in oh, the no. moves. No, I'm not. Uh. What? Flail and Hidden Power Ghost. It's... I chose this one because I would have recognized it based on the fact that I remember this back in Gen 3. Oh my god. Technically, it was UUBL. And, oh no, actually, it was. Yeah, it was UUBL in Gen 3, but it's PU now, so it doesn't matter. This was an OU set for it. The worst uh... part about Gen 3 is Hidden Power was used so much because they still did their damage based on the typings, so Ghost yeah. was physical. That's why it ran. Yeah, it. I remember. Shout out um... to HP Bug Heracross. Woohoo. I honestly <laughs> don't know. I don't know. What the hell? What the... Um, Have I done it? Um... Frick? Frack. Uh, I don't even remember what a frock is. What is a frock? Isn't that just something you wear? Isn't that a shirt? Or uh, a something like that. Did you research that Simpsons, by the way? Yeah, I couldn't find it. You're wrong. Oh, a frock is a dress. A long gown with flowing sleeves worn by monks, priests, or clergy. Oh. I don't know. Um, Scyther. No. Yeah, I thought so. Mm. So why'd you say it? I, I don't know what could have that moveset. And I'm not going to click on it to find out. We can upgrade you to the two-point tier. <sighs> Give it. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. All right, once I give this ability, you should get it. Actually, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to make one more guess. One more guess. Okay. 
Dodrio. You want to get... Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Damn it! Give me two points if you want. I don't care. No! You, you got your two guesses in at the tier. You get the three points. <laughs> yes, kidding, that was my favorite... That was a favorite set of mine in Gen 3 OU. Good yeah. old flail. You know why I thought of that? Mm-hmm. Because I think I've gotten it in a random three card <laughs> gentry match. And I was like, what the fuck? I mean, what the heck is this? Because <laughs> the other way you can run instead of endure is substitute, which gets your endurance or gets your flail damage up. So used to, yeah. I used to do something similar with Heracross. I used to do substitute uh, reversal with flame orb, mm -hmm. which was great. I got you. Well played, though, because I was going to tell you the ability was early burn. You would have been like, oh, and then, yeah. Yeah. Gamma staying afloat. Look at this man go. Okay. Spreading his wings. All right, Gamma, hit me. All right, well, speaking of wings, oh. um, I got a Pokemon. Dawn Wing Necrozma. From Gen 4 OU. Oh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not Gen 4. Okay, what is, the, what is it now? The current, it's still OU. St Ooh, so Gen 4, mm -hmm. but still OU. Okay. Yeah, Gen 4 moveset. Oh, boy. Rest, sleep, talk, Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt. That's Rotom. Watch. Is it though? Is it? Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the moment you said Rest Talk, I'm like, if he says Shadow Ball, it's Rotom Watch. Damn it. I, I, I tried doing Shadow Ball just to like, to, to goot trip you up a little. I the have. Other Rotoms. Mm -hmm. Wait, didn't Rotom Watch yeah. have to run Hydro Pump though? It didn't have to. I'm pretty sure it did. It didn't have to yeah it does it's an option no it's the whole thing you have to do with rotom why can't i look up rotom hello option on on smoke i won't let me look up rotom there we go what what it's an option i could have used will-o-wisp hold on Ro rotom doesn't show up on smoke gun it should i have the here i can give it's you the page it's not here uh here what you're high oh because i'm in the gen 3 my bad sorry 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 I gotta go to jump. That would explain a lot. Yeah. How do I get out? Get me off this crazy ride. Just click the link I sent you. No, nope. I'm going to look this up myself. Click the. I sent you a link to the page. No. Hydro pump is not 100% necessary on the Pokemon. It's an option. And this was back when I had stab ghost ball. I mean shadow ball. Ghost ball. Shut up. It's close enough. Uh, gamma. Yeah. You read this move set wrong. Did I? Yeah, it was either Thunderbolt or Shadow Ball, and then the oh. option was Willow is Hydro Pump or HP Ice. Oh well, if that was the case, I would have given Willow Wisp. I still would have guessed that it would be Rotom Wash. Actually, yeah, technically, it's not even Rotom Wash; it's Rotom. Well, I, yeah, I guess it is Rotom Wash. Yeah, I was gonna say it they name it as Rotom. they name it as Rotom A. So it says Rotom Wash right here. Yes, but the it was just Rotom Alternative because it didn't. It only changed its form. It didn't change its Pokemon. Because it was still mm. Ghost Electric. I, I still got it right. Mm. Oh, I could have gave a lot more options here, too. Dang. Are you serious? You didn't have to run yeah. a Hydro Pump? Wow. No. What an age. There's a dual screen one right here Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Light Screen, Reflect. What on With light earth? Clear. Yeah, it's very versatile. Why was that the case, but now they have to? I guess because they literally changed their forms. So they have to have that one signature move. Oh my god, I love the name of the set. Washing in the Rain. Rain Dance, Thunder, Hydro Pump, and Shadow Ball. Amazing. And we got, no, there's no Rotom Wash in this format. Darn. Mm. Well, I tried. You get Somebody run Roto Till or Rotom, Rotom Mo, do it. You know what, though, Gamma? That was yes. good. You stayed Thanks. afloat. I nailed it. I think everything's still balanced. 18 this whole thing's a wash. Ah! <laughs> Ow. I choose to remain silent to throw you off. I laughed too hard. You laughed way too hard for that. Just it's okay. You know what? We all need a good hearty ah once in a while, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry, it's happening again. Help. Help me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I want to scream more. Help me. All right. Well, let's scream at these bands, maybe. Bands? No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's let's move on. I know you got to go to work because you're a loose cannon. Got him. Yeah, I love being able to pay my bills. It's my do you, though? Do. It's my favorite thing to do, noob, obviously. I love now, it more than anything. Now editing. I'm just calling you for what it is. You're a freaking nerd for that one. <laughs> Straight up nerd for that one. 
Okay, let me get... Hey, Gamma. Yes. While I do some organization here. Mm-hmm. We're, five... we're four weeks in, right? We're going on to week five. We're going to start talking. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to start talking about the projection of the rest of the season, considering we only have mm -hmm. five to six battles left for most players. Or four mm -hmm. to six battles, I should say. Mm -hmm. So far, are you seeing a trend or a pattern with certain coaches that you want to either see continue or to change? It doesn't matter where their placement is, because the placement is kind of difficult to track since the number, numbers are all over the place. But can you identify any particular team you have your eye on that you want to see continue or, or change? Continue something? the way they're going about? I, I have exactly one, actually. That's it? And I'd like to call. I'd like to shout them out right now. Uh, world leader, you keep oh. it up, man. I want to see you keep going up. I want to see you top four. If I don't see you there, I'm going to be very sad. Top four? Ooh, so what does he do to get to yeah. top four? His last battles, his remaining battles, Ice Cold, Fortnite mm -hmm. Ninjas, mm -hmm. I Am Groot. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to laugh. I'm just like, I'm looking at him like, oh, God. Lunar Cresselius, mm -hmm. Todd Skyrim Howard. Mm -hmm. So we've got two in the in the bottom five, yes. and then the top two. Yes. Or what would be top two based on skilled level? I think he has the chance to 1-1 one, one at least the top twos. I, I think he has the skills from what I've been seeing, and I'm proud of him that he's gone as far as he has and what he's been doing with the Pokemon he's choose with he's chosen do you and I'm looking. I'm sorry see. no you're good i was gonna ask do you think he could continue to play the way that he's playing now to eke out the one ones the very least he could okay but i also want to see him put as much thought as he can into it just don't overthink it because you might just trip yourself up. Did you just say put as much thought, but don't overthink it? That you have to put all of your thought in to overthink something. No. 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 Bert. No. We do. We do. I know what I said. And the audience does what you said very clearly. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes, you're right. They need to know. You know what? I to be to be dead <laughs> honest with you, just to continue on the world leader hype train. I mm -hmm. I agree. I actually think I I'm really excited for world leader i i think this is after so many seasons and the multiple different placements that he's had in the season i i do think this is his time to go to playoffs and to look really really strong going into playoffs uh overshadowed obviously by a lot of high tier players maybe also overshadowed by those you know those mid tiers that we would have expected to be mid tiers mm -hmm. but i do think he is on the upswing and despite the fact like if you think about it even if he was the 1-1, if he is able to crush the remaining competition that are vying for that 6th or 5th seed, all he has to do is get the top 6, right? Mm -hmm. So even when wanting some people that are below him in scores wouldn't be the worst. But right now, he is going to be fending off. He's got three people who are around his score, and then he has two people above his score. If he's able to drag them down and even, bring, and even, and even show some type of proficiency, do you think that World Leader's team... Just because we're just talking about this, do you think World Leader's team stands a really good chance in best of fives? With the way, like, because right now we've seen some pretty specific builds. Outside of it, I still think it's a strong team, but we haven't seen him win with a with a quote unquote like the standard comp, right? We've seen mm -hmm. very good week by week adaptations. So maybe in elimination rounds, like in the knockout round for the quarters, he can do it. But do you see this team going through semis and finals with one build? If he could finagle something that's basically perfect. You know, I believe in him. I think he could do it. I want to say that too. I want to say there is some semblance of he could find the most balance to win it and take best of fives. I don't think he's built too off the cusp too off the cuff that would necessarily become incredible. Like you're going to be predictable no matter what because you're playing a best of five, right? So after two after two yeah. games, you're going to pretty much figure out what they all have for the most part, unless you're hiding mm -hmm. it that well. I don't think World Leaders team rolls over that hard. No. We've seen it happen, but I don't think that's because of his team composition. So I I can see it being a very good top four playoffs team when he de when he can't just build for one person at a time. Building against building for three potential opponents or two potential opponents, top of the one he has to play against. I would agree with that. 
Um, I think another one I actually want to watch for is also Traverse City Thunderous. I want to see him continue this aggressive. I think I think we need more aggressive representation that can go places in this in this tournament. The highest we've seen Hyper Aggro go was the semifinals, and I would say Dan Man's team back in season two was the thing that did that with his uh, very aggressive uh, Charizard Y Venusaur comp. But mm -hmm. I I want to see more aggression go through with it and just go from there and how well he can actually uh, build something that's standard and go through with it. Are you okay? I'm ready to yell about these bands. Okay, you you look like you were, like, are 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 you? Am I saying something that you're not liking? Like, you look a no, little concerned. No, no, no. I, I <laughs> wasn't concerned. Time. I was just, I was, I was staring out into space because I have no idea what happened in season two. Okay, no, I just, you, but then you, you, you suddenly came to this like, noob. It's four o'clock. Like, I know it's four o'clock, but <laughs> we're gonna talk about these bands slowly because everybody that's actually involved this week will have trades as well. So we're gonna go through it bit by bit. I'm going to mm -hmm. put my bricks out in the sticks. Okay, just singing a song. My bad. I don't, I don't Oh, you don't know, know that band? Oh, you know, you know Mother Mother. I don't know that band. You know Mother no. Mother? Really? No. Do you no. Oh, do you have the Edge? No, it's a Canadian station. This is the Edge a lot, so. It would be a perfect station for you because you're edgy. No? I'm going to eat my Doritos and drink Mountain Dew. Wait, what? Nothing. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, Okay. All right, week five. Okay. Let's go week five. I, Gamma has now officially not only zoned out, but he's zoned out and powered down part of his brain, I think. Because he's gone. Does not compute. Oh, no. Function, oh, no. Gamma.exe. I, I knew I got to clean the dust out of that more often. First <laughs> series of the week, we did agree on a particular match of the week for the yes. record. Yeah, okay. So, first series of the week, Traverse City Thunders versus Todd Skyrim Howard. This is Shark King versus Soto Dude. And I want to look at Oricorio. <laughs> I don't see. If I don't see Oricorio, if I'm going to be set. I'm dead serious. If I don't see Oricorio even once, even in a loss, I'm going to be mega sad. Dancer against the Volcarona. Come on. Come on. For the record, Gyarados was banned for Traverse City Thunderous and... Soto dude, Todd Skyrim Howard, once again losing the mascot Dragonite. I don't think we're seeing that Dragonite <laughs> ever, and his team makes the most sense that his Dragonite would get banned because everything else seems pretty mortal with the Dragonite out of there. Seems to do too well for him, which is actually part of his ground resist of ground immunity, right? So, what do you think about this matchup, though? Like, or choreo jokes aside, what do you actually think about this matchup? We were talking a lot about this before we started recording. I just gotta remember exactly what I was saying. Uh, basically, uh, I think it could be a 1-1. I could see it happening, uh, as long as Soto Dude brings in the right Pokemon and goes with the Or. Please give me Oricorio. Please just put the put the Oricorio in there, please. <laughs> I'm begging you, Ele Electric Oricorio, just please. That is okay, actually. I'm done begging. It, it is it is a legit thing to talk about with the Electric Oricorio because we were trying to figure out if you could actually make Oricorio work with the combination of Pokemon on Todd Skyrim's team. And uh, for the record, we do need to talk about the new ringer that came in. Reveal, mm. the Primarina Hello. is gone, and we bring in Kevin. Bum, 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 bum. Durant. Durant is in. Now, yeah. funny thing about Durant is this is the 109 speed Pokemon that I was talking about before, not Meloetta. Meloetta is not a metal ant that wants to destroy the Earth. Durant's actually, I think, a really good grab here for Soto Dude. Soto Dude's running a lot of Trick Room, but in singles, in single format Trick Room, I think having Fast Pokemon's still good. So something like a Weavile or something of the sort that could do similar to what Weavile does, so like something like Aerodactyl or things like that. I think Durant fits the bill, and I do think these last two trades that Todd Skyrim Howard has made between the Kingdra and the Durant make a lot of sense to give him those sweeping potentials and give him the damage, because that's really where it's falling apart. You haven't seen the damage come out since that Zerker Troop was used last, right? So now you have another Pokemon. Pokemon on top of Cabalion, on top of uh, Chandelure if it ever gets used, but Zerka Tree, and now you got the King versus Durant. I think he's starting to build more damage overall that will cover a lot of things that he needs to cover in terms of getting the damage down. And against Traverse City Thunderous, I think that Durant has really good matchup against that Volcarona if it gets in first and drops the Rock Slide. Oh, yeah, that's easily a one shot. Oh yeah, for sure. Because yeah, you don't even so. need Stone Edge. I don't. I get Stone Edge, but I run Rock Slide just because it's it's safer. And plus flinch. 
Well, you don't need flinch. It's dead. It's gonna flinch in death. It's gonna be in the fetal position. Yeah. While well, if something rocks. swaps out, it could flinch, and then oh wait, it's swapping out, so it don't matter. What I'm saying I'm stupid. The nice, <laughs> the nice thing <laughs> is, home claws Durant can do quite a bit here. I think I don't think we could drop the home claws hustle Durant, giving it its accuracy on top of just having all that extra power. We were a bit concerned with a particular Pokemon, though, for him to manage the damage from. Which one was that, Gamma? Oh my god, my brain. My brain. I know this one. I know this one. Hold on. Uh, I hope he knows this one. I forgot it, too. Oh god, no. Where's the Pokey Paste? A Pokey Where's Paste? Look Poke at the team. Paste? Look at the coach team. Oh god. Wait, you don't have the coach uh, sheet open? Yeah, I do. I just have it on the wrong page. Hold on. Uh, I have it. I have it. No, no, no. Damn it, noob! That was your fault. <laughs> that was your blue. Now everybody knows he has an android. Oh no! Uh, Gamma's identity has been exposed as an android user. Same. Speaking of which, Pokemon Masters, probably wait. Uh, did we? Was it Agron? Were we talking about Agron? Mm -hmm. The Agron seems a little bit difficult for him to get through if he doesn't have a Chandelure out safely. Because the the nice thing for him is Lorantis has superpower, but it's got to worry about Heavy Slam. Chandelure has Fire Blast, but it's got to worry about Earthquake. Uh, the likes of Cobalion can blast through it, but it's got to worry about Earthquake. So, there are a few Pokemon here that are going to be a little bit different. I think, actually, the Weezing gets a lot of good value here against, uh, Traverse City Thunderous, though, because Weezing can come in, soak up the hits, go for Will-O-Wisp, and burning things like the Kabutops, bur trying to burn things like the Kabutops, the Alolan Muck, the Aggron, these will be really important things for him to remove, so that the damage is heavily reduced. And if you run something like, like, the way that I'm thinking about it personally, is Scarf Durant. Because you want to get Durant in, even on a plus one, I don't think, I I don't think Shark King's really had a lot of time to kind of super mega set up. He's kind of just had a, a baby one turn because it's offense, right? The moment you, you set up too much, you get too greedy with offense. Gamma can attest to this. I can attest to this too. Once you get too greedy with offense, you just drop because you just get killed on the time you're trying to get super mega, you know, high payoff, high, high risk, high reward sort of things. Mm -hmm. And... With Durant being Scarfed, it mitigates... It's already faster than Volcarona, and it's faster than Volcarona at plus one. So if you run that Jolly... Durant, you know that will dumpster a lot of things. It should be okay. I think Soda Dude actually has a pretty good has a pretty good chance here. Jellicent, Gamma was a bit reserved about explaining it. I'm kind of am too, now that you've mentioned it. Because, yes, it does get a lot done, but if he can't burn the Serena... He, he might... Like, honestly, it wouldn't be the worst if he just brings a bunch of Will-O-Wisp Pokemon. I think the big thing is going to be the Alol Nine Tails if it does get in when the Durant's not threatening it, because Durant will dumpster that. You will have a few other Pokemon like Weezing can dumpster too, not dumpster completely, but it can do a lot of damage to it. It's going to come down to a setup show and whether or not if he brings Agron or Rhyperior on the side of Diversity Thunderous, you can't just play Zerkatry for free. But I think Zerkatry gets some stuff done here too. Maybe a Spec Zerkatry. I think Electrum Z is also fine. So. I think there's a lot of play here for both these coaches to think about what's going to be chosen and and uh, and going from there, personally. Gamma and I just both did a running pose like we did it. With the... Hi, high five, Wahoo. Gamma. Hi, five, five, Gamma. Play a game of chicken. Who's touching their Who's touching their thing first? My hands are so small. Look at the size of my hand. It's yeah. a child's hand. Like, that's even at, look, look, even at the screen, it just reveals that I'm skeletal. Oh, man, I want my, I want my beef back, man. I just want to be beefy. Actually, I'm getting there again, kind of, sort of. I have been cleared for upper body. You keep showing off your muscles, yeah. Well, that's actually just it's me like talking. like the third week in a row. Yeah, but you see, I'm talking and it just flexes, so I can't help that. It's just the way it goes. Oh, yeah. It's like muscles yeah, no, contract. Like, whenever I start talking, whenever I start talking, I just, I just automatically start doing like a... Look at this. Oh, I gotta scratch my head at the maximum velocity. Oh, wow. Is that actually a muscle? What the fuck? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yes, everybody has a bicep, Gamma. Yeah, well... You're cheating, though. The actual... The actually, just really quick, pseudo-fitness lesson. You're not supposed to flex like this because this is cheating. To show off the bicep is to turn your hand over like when people do this. That's the bicep right there. This flexes... Um, the, the, the bundle of, of, uh, muscle here that just you know, over inflates it, but this is actually the bicep showing off. Oh, no, is this tricep? Is this tricep? No, this is tricep. If you turn your hand over, this is bicep. This is tricep. There you go. So bicep is your hand turned in. I was going to remember. I forgot. I forgot that you had to do it different ways. Tricep. And you get this little muscle here. Do you have this muscle here on your, on your forearm when you flex like this? Like poke. 
Yeah, flex like that and then poke. Does nobody else have... I'm still trying to find someone who has a muscle right here. Do you not see it? Like this this big bulge right here on my arm? Sort of. Like, Hold on. I could I can, I can pitch right here. See that? That's a muscle. That's a forearm muscle. It's very uh -huh. difficult to build. You have to do a lot of wrist work with that. And I used to do a ton of, like, lifting with wrists back when I gotcha. wasn't super damaged. We're talking about Pokemon, right? Yeah, we got about 20 minutes to talk about Pokemon. 20 minutes to talk about Pokemon? I like talking about yeah. Pokemon 24-4. So let's talk about the second matchup of the week, which will be the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios versus I Am Groot. Gamma, what are we seeing out of this? Oh, first of all, we should talk about bands. Yes, we should. Talk about bands. So I Am Groot has lost their superior. Las Vegas Golden Lucarios has lost their Lopany. So Scissor's coming back off the bench. What do we feel mm -hmm. about this? Also, we should mention that the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios has dumpstered the diva. And is now yeah. cutting the Celebi in. I was going to try and it's go sad. cut the onion, but yeah, it's... it's... <laughs> How thematic. A diva being cut and an onion bring it in. They both bring sadness. Gamma, you didn't actually like this trade-up very much. Why not? I think Meloetta was a better Pokemon. It just needed to be played a certain way. And I don't think it got that justice. Okay. Personally. So... so in your opinion, what did Meloetta do for the team? Or what was it supposed to do for the team that Celebi's not going to be able to cover? Well, it had the fighting type, along with Relic Song, Super Power. I think that was solid for, like, Pokemon like Mega Iron and whatnot. So. But would it have ever gotten anywhere? It, it, it never really got it off, though, so we never got to see it. That's my point. Like, it never got it off. If it yeah. got it off, that would have been cool. I mean, to be fair, in my opinion, the Lopany makes the most sense as the fighting Pokemon on the team. Anyways, I'm, I'm yeah, pseudo on, I'm pseudo on the fence because the Meloetta specs or just on the special side is so strong and showed how strong it can be against Michi W. If it had the again, it was it was a matter of builds, but if it showed that full potential, I think it would have actually done quite a bit. Although I do know that Koma was telling me he wanted a really good Grass type because he was resorting to Roserade and he. Didn't he has like one of his his win is on Rosary, but he wants a stronger defensive core, and that was similar to what we said in the beginning of the Pro Pokeball when we saw Draft Day happen. He's got all these great offensive Pokemon, and then he just has a defensive core that's pseudo pieced together. So this might be the start of Las Vegas Golden Lucario's building a new team towards the end of the season. Right, it's the first trade of the season that's gone through Celebi in Meloetta out. And we might see something like the Claydol drop now because we have a Psychic Grass type. And we can keep Roserade, no big deal. But he has a lot of Pokemon you can now play around with to try and keep building teams as he comes towards the end of the season. Because right now, if you look at his matchups, if he really wants to make it to top six, his remaining schedule is I Am Groot, which we're going to talk about in a second, Lunar Cresselius, Todd Skyrim Howard, Manchester Manetric, TC Thunderous, and, and that's it. Right? So he's got, again... Near the bottom of the near near the bottom of the sixth seed, and then you have a couple of higher level players, right? Including this one this week against I Am Groot. So we haven't seen Sweet D in a he took a week off. Mm -hmm. What are we going to what are we going to expect out of this series? That's a good question, dude. I ask a good I, I you ask good questions that I never have answers for because I'm a ding dong. It's my job. Uh, no, I think, honestly, I think that Lopunny being banned is going to be a pretty big hit to, uh, Koma. Because, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's his fighting Pokemon. He just got rid of Meloetta, the could have used to fight. Mm -hmm. Pirouette would not do, would not cover the bill for Megalopony. Megalopony was an enormous ban for Sweetie. Sweetie did not want to, I, I could already see it, unless he brings that same Suicune set. It would have done a ton of damage. Because <laughs> it, it doesn't even have to rely on other... It's just got return, right? You just go return plus high jump kick. It's just, well, yeah, man, most things just get dumpstered on his team. So, yeah. uh, and then low kick would actually matter again. No, it wouldn't. But, yeah, Lopity was a big ban. And Superior makes sense. I, I, I think it's more right. of a, hey, you have Scizor, but you have to worry about HP Fire on the Superior. So, I think, I think both these coaches ban some pretty good stuff. The most that I would see happening, uh, if... Koma had to deal with the superior would be the thunder the thunder wave Klefki. literally like he has no other thing that he could bring that would be able to tank it up Selby would not want to tank up after one or two contrary leaf storms it's just such a threat you have to deal with it so nonetheless they both ban good things here that would be dangerous against each other uh it's it's kind of difficult to say because let's let's take a look at the 
if we do really look at Koma's team objectively, he's going to want to use that Scizor because that's his Pokemon. So he's got his Scizor, and now he has a Celebi. And Feeny. What does Feeny, Celebi, and Scizor do to I Am Groot? The answer? Um, it could do a bit. It just needs to happen. It, it really needs to happen. With Suicune being unleashed, you don't want to necessarily... Like, here's the nice thing, right, with Feeny against Suicune. If you win after... If you get Misty Terrain out, and you can get the status on Suicune before the Misty Terrain might be not too bad. Like, if you could find a way to status that Suicune. Celebi at least can put pressure down with that sort of thing, like threatening and hit it before the combine set up too much. He's got to get... He's got to get the status down. He's got to get that... I, I might see... We might see Crocoon here, or uh, Rescoon. I think Rescoon might be able to take a lot of damage with Lopini gone. Although you do have to be worried about Scizor setting up. What's that? I need damage calcs. I'm thinking. I'm brainstorming. Okay. On the side of Sweetie, uh, I think Sweetie's going to be a big deal here. I also think... Does he have anything for... I think I think Blissey Suicoon is most certainly going to be showing their faces. Crobat most likely as well, considering that you need Pokemon to take out the Grass users, and it's just really fast. He can pivot quite a bit. He could be, he'll be able to scout a lot more. And knowing that Sweetie has just an immense amount of knowledge in the game compared to Koma, like in terms of experience and stuff like that. This is, again, it's very similar to what we said about with Michi W. Koma could do it. He just needs to think very far ahead and he needs to see it from draft from team building right he has to go from team building and bring the plan similar to how it looks so good from in game number two to draw to drop mitchy down two points right he needs to do the same thing to sweet d and just have that one pokemon and find the answer that he can't take on i think scizor could do it but he's got to be very careful because there's a lot of pokemon that could defensively take the hits suicune is going to have max defense investment so he's got to find a way to get the damage down before it gets the calm minds up or just get the blissey out but i mean he's got a lot to threaten these other pokemon gastrodon might actually make i don't know if gastrodon will make its appearance it could because it'll also handle he might just be worried about scizor honestly but feeny is also a problem so storm drain gastrodon somewhat makes sense as long as you're not worried about if you got Blissey Gastron, you can handle Feeny on all ends. Can Terrakion clean up in any way? Terrakion could kind of clean up in some ways if you get enough damage down. It's got it's got the move set with maybe Scarf to do it. It could also go Rock Polish if it feels safe enough. But I'm 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 definitely expecting to see a Mandibuzz or a Crobat. Probably Mandibuzz because a little bit more defensive. Crobat can put down damage with Soak and Mandibuzz. There are a lot of options here for Sweetie to kind of get his win condition in. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Because I think it's going to really come down to what the Las Vegas Golden Lucarios try and bring for us here. And uh, make work. If I don't see a Grass Knot on, on, on that Celebi, I'm going to be very disappointed. What does it do? Uh, it does... It can two-shot that hip out on. And I'm pretty sure it can one-shot the Gastrodon. It will one... Uh, yeah, it should. Let me just double-check. I would imagine it would. Wait, what? It's not that heavy, though, so it might not happen. Hmm, I'm not sure. It can, it can still two shot it, if not. What's the date? What's the base damage of uh, Grass Knot on Gastrodon? The base damage minimum would be okay. I'm well, not sure is, how to use this calculator. Is... Oh, it, I'm I'm not sure how to use this calculator. Okay, hold on. I'm oh, um, uh, it should say it. Zero. Oh, this is I'm using a defensive Celebi. What the heck? Help, noob! I don't know how to do this. Okay, if we look up Grass Knot. I just want to know the base damage. Okay, so Grass Knot's base 60. What would it do against a Suicune? How much damage does it do against Suicune? Grass Knot is base 100. Ooh. Oh, that's how you tell. Yeah, it says at the it top. You could two shot those Pokemon. On Gastro? Yeah, I could, I could two shot it. I didn't actually pay attention to it too much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, that. depending on the damage overall, I think Grass Knot would be the best call here. I was, I was actually thinking that too. I'm like, I wonder if Grass Knot would would earn him anything because otherwise you'd run, you wouldn't like, you could go super hard on Leaf Storm, but I don't think you need to. I think actually, yeah. like, if 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 you were gonna get the similar results with the likes of Grass Knot, that you go Giga Drain just for a little bit more sustainability, safer, gets more damage done on average to Pokemon, but Grass Knot here to be very specific to manage those, and then you carry U-turn with the Grass Knot to kind of say, you're not staying in, I'm switching out sort of thing, if Koma can pull that off. So, 
But I think there are potentials here. I think I think there are options. I I again, it's not gone because on paper there are potential, and the cell becoming in might be a good thing for Coma. So if he really is feeling uncomfortable with his defensive corner, now he's starting to get one more towards it, then maybe he does find his way in. But I think that if Sweetie gets his overall setups going, it might look a little bleak, especially since he kind of has some uh, some anti synergy with the fact that Feeney's going to stop Sweetie from going. But then again. Suku can't sleep if it's in misty terrain. So, you know, there is the potential for these things to happen. I don't know. It's, it's, there's, there's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I, 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 again, I want to see Koma bring this, right? It's, it's, yeah, I, I want to see it. I want to see it. I, I believe I can see it. Last series of week five, which we will be seeing, which is also our featured matchup of the week. It will be Ice Cold versus Golden State, Grin Ninja's initiator versus world leader. Gammon and I chose this one because we I we do firmly believe that this one is going to be the most important in terms of points and also in terms of just asserting skill, trying to get into that top six. Currently, Ice Cold with Four games played has seven points, and Golden State Grenadiers with five games played has nine points. So they're both trying, trying like World Leader is trying to stay up there in top six. Uh, Initiator is going to start making his push now because he has actually the most games left over for him to gain points. It's going to be very important for him to start getting this off. Along with Fortnite Ninjas, actually, both of them are looking to start grabbing a lot of points. But I think it's going to be more important for Ice Cold to start looking towards this. It's going to be very interesting. Because they're both fairly innovative when it comes to building specifically for the week. And as of recency bias, we've seen World Leader do a lot more. We also have seen Ice Cold play as much. And the last week that he had, he was kind of a, was a, you know, not a show. It was a, it was an unfortunate destruction it was unfortunate destruction against initiator but that's not to take away from him but let's take a look at this because it's going to be super neat ice cold lost their mawile and brought in no no, no i'm not talking about nice nice try gamma nice you were close man you, you almost got there ice cold lost their mawile gold sacred has lost their venusaur and the trade yeah. that ice cold got away with because of trade priority Yep. Mimikyu is back in the closet. He did it just to spite me. And Heatran is now an icy hot fanatic. That burns. I'm glad you're going to feel that singe for a little bit. Mm -hmm. With Heatran, Gamma, we have now seen three trades on Ice Cold. Yep. Moltres, Hydreigon, Heatran. Thoughts. I'm just surprised I haven't seen the Kurbama go yet. <laughs> Gamma, no, we're in serious trying... time right now. No, I I know. I, I think that he's trying to put together a very solid team. Picking up the heat train was important. I think it was a good thing on his part, even though I'm still kind of mm, salty about the Mimikyu. But, so... Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it, it's kind of a difficult decision for him because if you really want to pick up something powerful like Heatran, and if it's going to work on his team, I find it kind of strange that he went for the Moltres despite the fact that you kind of saw what he wanted to do, but he also didn't expect the High Dragon to get dumped into the pools. So, unfortunately, he stuck with his Moltres on his team because as per the trade rules of the Pro Pokeball, once you trade a Pokemon in or trade a Pokemon out, they can no longer return to that team. So... With Moltres having to be on this team now, it feels kind of redundant because you can run Defog on your High Dragon if you really wanted to. And I think, honestly, I don't think Moltres is going to get much done from it. And especially now that he has Heatran, Moltres is kind of dead. So he's kind of stuck with one Pokemon down. Unless he finds some value in Hurricane or something of the sort. We don't know that yet because Moltres can still do a few different things. It can be that good old defensive flying KFC. So with Heatran, it's going to give him a lot more bulk. It's also a, a not a super fast Pokemon, but it can still hold its own and we've seen initiator can play outside of this trick room i don't want to say gimmick it's actually his core so he can play outside of this trick room core and make something like this happen with scarf trainer just make it offensive defensive whatever he needs and we want we need to see more defense i think i think when you saw everything kind of getting destroyed by psychic and dark 
Uh, it, it call and rocks. You kind of needed something that could come in and say hello to all of that, and Heatran fits that bill. So he does get that. He did steal. He did steal away from Fortnite ninjas as well as Golden State Grid ninjas. Looking for this, Golden State Grid is going up against him. So it it would have been something that World Leader would have really really liked to add to his team to make that true Firewater Grass core. However. We do need to actually talk about a particular Pokemon because there is a Pokemon on Ice Cold's team that destroys Golden State Greninjas. Can you guess what that is, Gamma? Oh, boy. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Here's the uh, hint. You're not going to like the answer. Oh, my God. It's a problem, isn't it? <sighs> Venusaur's banned, right? Yep. Bibarel. Superpower. Empoleon. Superpower. Flygon. Ice Hammer. Pelipper. Stone Edge. Ludicolo. Ice Hammer. Cloyster. Superpower. Infernape. <laughs> Shall I go I hate on? Pokemon. <laughs> I hate everything about Pokemon. This game sucks. <laughs> there actually is incredible value in this particular cosmos of a lifetime where Crabomitable will actually be the star of this show in Trick Room. It's got a supporting Pokemon right under also good with fighting moves. Which is? Kamala. 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 I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna see Kamala this week. It's got hammer arm, doesn't it? Oh yeah, maybe. I I believe if Golden State Greninjas are really gonna maintain this, this will be something they have to beat because they've lost the Venusaur and this means that that slow that slow bro gets a tiny bit more value if Ludicolo isn't used. The problem is, well, Ludicolo doesn't like being fast when it's a trick room team, so he might have the answer. But I feel like Ice Cold has. Uh, there's a lot of things you got to deal with. There's that Ferrothorn. There's the Crabominable. Uh, there are there are potential there's potential here for a lot of defense that he's gonna have to tank up on the side of the golden state greninjas and you know it's it, it just it it mm. no matter how sacrificial ice cold becomes as long as they get crab bombed about for free in a trick room things die things die hard like they they do the bruce willis they will die hard so you know, it's it's going to come down to World Leader reading that and really knowing that's going to happen because I, I think Ice Cold has this on paper. Okay. I was wrong. It doesn't get Hammer Arm. It gets Wood Hammer. But it does learn Superpower. Dang. Well, that's better. That's even better. Yeah. For Kamala. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, yeah. It just, like, it just puts its drum down. It's like... Ooh, just like drunken, drunken suplex aerials you. Yep, that's that's about right. I want you to actually. Sorry. I'm not going to reveal anything more on the podcast because I don't want to give away mm -hmm. secrets. But I want you to look through Kamala. Actually, I that am. probably reveals the secrets. I want you. You. It's one of those weird Pokemon. It's like Electros. The first time you met Electros, you're like, "Why do you do all of this?" You know? Yeah, it's, no, I'm seeing. Yeah, it's it's got some really weird stuff on it. Mm -hmm. If only it was actually a better Pokemon, because Comatose is super yeah. busted. And then, uh, sorry. oh, it just can't be statused. Whatever. I guess it can use Sleep Talk for free. Yeah, but it can use Defense Curl. So what does it matter? Can it roll out? Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> It can also spit up and swallow, obviously. <laughs> it's it Yeah, and yeah, it does. Oh my god. Does does Game Freak actually know what a koala does? It's like a <laughs> panda bears. It's not a koala. Pandas should be able oh to do this. God. Do we have a panda Pokemon yet? Yeah, yeah. Pangoro. Pangoro. I was just about to say, I'm like, wait a minute, I just said that, and I instantly Pangoro goes, hi, in my ears. What does... What is this move pool? Oh my god! You're, you're, Disgusting! Yeah. Don't gamble. Look away. I I'm. You're gonna done. get Medusa. To look away, the, man. I'm done talking about Kamala. It's gross. We've got we've got Togedemaru and Shedinja doing well in VGC, and now we've got Kamala with this. Oh, what an age we live in! It's so good. But Gamma, what do you think about this matchup between Golden State Greninjas and Ice Cold? 
I think it's going to be a solid one one. Really? Who? Okay. Yeah. Let's let's bring this let's bring this into a little bit of of an interesting guess. Who takes game one? Who brings the better game plan at the beginning of the day? I think it's going to be world leader. Okay. But I think Inish is going to swap some stuff around and take. Okay. I'm going to take the opposite side. I think Initiator is going to take game one. Because okay. I feel like even if World Leader is listening to this podcast right now and hears everything about Crabominal and hears everything about the options that Initiator has, I think he could adapt in game two if he, if he brings the right Pokemon. But I think he's also going to want to scout in game one to see if suspicions of what Initiator wants to do are correct and then try and bring answers to that. Because I don't necessarily think... I, I don't believe... Because Initiator... I, I don't think it's so much on Initiator. I think Initiator plays the exact strat that he needs, that he, that he knows he needs. And it's going to be World Leader who's on the back foot here trying to find those answers. There might be this secret Pokemon we're not we're not realizing. There is a lot of priority in in his arsenal. I mean, Infernape with Mach Punch is probably going to be a given again, considering that it worked on Megalopony. It's probably going to work on Crabominable too. But you have that fake out Ambipom, which might actually get value. And unfortunately, it's not Sinchino. Brought it up in the podcast. But, uh... Why? Because I can. But if he has a few Pokemon here, like Ice... He could bring Ice Shard Coyster. He could bring uh, Mach Punch Infernape. Ambipom could do these types of things. And Aqua Jet. Like, if he brings a lot of priority, it might be his way in. But it's not going to be doing a lot against Ice Cold, so... I think it's going to be down to what he can what he can work out while Initiator just kind of has kind of... It's not an easy build, but I think it's a much more straightforward kind of win condition knowing that I think he has the upper hand offensively. But I do agree. I think it might be a 1-1 here, but I, I, I we have two different scenarios. And if it doesn't go 1-1, I think that will show... Like, if it's a 2-0, I'm going to guess 2-0 Ice Cold, actually. Even though we're talking about World Leader, the prodigy son that we want to nurture and give him a nice room. We want to paint the walls, give him the best toys we possibly can. I think he's not that endure. He's not that durable in the, in the freezing cold yet, so... It's. I think it's on World Leader here to work his way through while Initiator brings that solid plan and just has that upper hand, personally. So that's why it's our feature match of the week. It seems very interesting. We have different different ideas on how the games could play out from the very beginning. But with that, that's going to be the end of the Pro Poker Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Amma Gamma, I need you to plug yourself. Oh, no. L- listen, last time I plugged something in to an electrical outlet, it caught on fire. So. I guarantee you... The plug is fresh each week, so you okay. can, you can put your computer into it. You can put no your Twitter players. handle into it. You can put your Twitch handle into it. The Team Pocket Aces handles All into right. it. All of the handles right. are not even made. We don't even conduct electricity for metal, man. We're using pure <laughs> magical energy. All right, all right. Uh, if you guys want to check me out, I stream at twitch.tv slash Gamma. Uh, also, teampocketaces.com brings you right to our YouTube channel where me and Noob do videos and stuff. And we, we've been playing a lot of Showdown. So Are feel we? free to check that out. New episode <laughs> on Monday. Uh, thanks on to Mo- Boss for I don't know editing. what I'm uploading this. You can't say Monday. <laughs> every Monday it should oh, be. every Monday. Okay. I, I pay attention to our schedule. Yes. Yes. Um, listen, man. I have a calendar. Okay. I have a calendar too. I just don't put. I, I, I see the stuff being t- retweeted or tweeted out. And I retweet it. I don't pay attention to what day I do that. I just retweet it. All right. Well, Tim's supposed to do that. Everybody right. in, in the comments, tell Tim to do his job. Yes, please. Please yell at... at oh, no, I'm not going to put all his Twitters down there. <laughs> all his Twitters? All his Twitters. I, I feel like Tim has, one of them. I feel like Tim has four Twitters. Just Maybe. <laughs> They're all just nah, different yeah. types of animals. <laughs> Timber Fox. Timber Chihuahua. Amazing. Timber Chihuahua! <laughs> If you guys want, amazing. If you guys want to watch the pro pokeable action and hear more stupid rambling from myself, twitch.tv slash pro pokenoob. Week five is August twenty first, seven PM Eastern time. Fire up and we're gonna get into those three matches that we talked about today. Thank you very much for joining us. And if you'd like to listen to more, make sure you stay tuned on the YouTube and other platforms this may be placed on in the future. Till then, have an excellent day, everybody, and peace. Later. Later.